サスケナルトサスケナルトアニメ Or it is so bad that you will think abuse is somehow normal. Why can't anime just show a normal, healthy relationship? The same reason your friends don't want to take basket weaving with you. It is so damn boring to watch. Romance anime junkies want drama. And nothing breeds more drama than bad relationships. And boy, are there plenty of bad relationships to be found throughout anime. Well, enough chit chat. Here are the anime containing the most toxic relationships. Number 27, Mischievous Kiss. Mischievous Kiss features a bad romance that goes both ways. You have Kuroko, who, after getting flat out rejected during her confession of love by her crush, proceeds to still stalk and hold a major obsession over him. Her crush, Naoki, is no prince either. If he isn't being completely cold to her, he is stringing his obsessive stalker along. Through circumstance, they end up living together and feelings begin to develop. But even after they start dating, things get worse. Naoki ends up getting jealous and possessive even though he still, for the most part, continues his cold attitude. Kuroko, on the other hand, starts to come into her own, but continues to try and please a man that is so constantly hot and cold to her. Number 26, Midori Days. What isn't wrong about falling in love with your right hand? I guess it is somehow less wrong when that hand turns out to be a girl like in Midori Days. Still, what is more unhealthy than developing feelings for a girl that is trapped as your hand? It is not like she can get away. While Midori does eventually get unhanded and put back in her body, she has no memory of her time spent with Seiji. This makes the fact that after a few days of being stalked by a guy she doesn't remember even more strange. When she suddenly admits that she loves him. Number 25, Nana. Nana is the go to anime for romance fans that like a ton of drama. However, while Nana Osaki is actually relatively well adjusted in the realms of love, Nana Komatsu is a train wreck. Throughout the series, she not only goes through multiple bad relationships, but one of her key character traits is falling in love with someone at first sight. Falling in love with someone within moments of meeting them is not love, it is infatuation, and something that doesn't pan out for Hachi very well. 24. My Little Monster The relationship in My Little Monster between Shizuku and Hero is akin to two ships passing on the water. Very briefly, are they aligned, but for the most part, they spend their time on two opposite sides in terms of feelings. At first, Hero likes Shizuku, and then her snippiness pushes him away. Shizuku then realizes that she actually likes Hero, and that is how the rest of the series goes. Basically, their whole relationship becomes one trying to push the other away. Number 23, Toradora. As cute as Toradora is, you can't deny that there are a few things wrong with the relationship between Taiga and Ryuji, at least at first. Ryuji is fine, but it is Taiga that is the problem. Her verbal and physical abuse tends to go too far and happens too often. But that's just Tsundere's, right? A Tsundere outside of anime is almost always a recipe for domestic abuse. The good news is that Taiga does seem to come to terms with her temper by the end. Number 22, Hana Yori Dango. Hana Yori Dango's popularity is baffling, considering how terrible the actual relationship is. It is the poster child for the thankfully dying out trope that rich men can basically do whatever to you and you'll love them all the same. 
Throughout the series, Damyoji continues to try to dominate Makino either physically or through his money. He blackmails her family, kidnaps her, and basically tries to buy her love. And it works. They fall in love. Sure, she loves him for him, but you can't argue that she isn't at least a little pleased by the money too. What's worse is that without the money, Damyoju is actually a pretty unlikable sort of person. Number 21. Class President is a Maid While the relationship between Usui and Misaki has a lot of swoon-worthy moments, it basically began as some pretty hardcore stalking. His initial behavior is pretty much harassment, which continues on through the relationship. Do girls like a relationship with a lot of challenges to keep things interesting? Because that is pretty much what his personality offers. Nothing says love like telling someone to go away, only to have them become more aggressive in their attentions. Number 20. School Days Ah, uh, school days. There is no relationship in school days that even comes close to being normal, because it is a horror parody on school romance anime. Makoto is a serious manslut who not only cheats on Katonaha constantly, but cheats on her with the girl that actually encouraged them to date. While Makoto tries and fails to break up with Katonaha, her feelings become even more desperate to keep him, her desperation eventually turning into obsession. However, during this whole love triangle, Makoto also ends up kissing and having sex with several other girls. So naturally, it all ends with tears and severed heads as you'd expect from a stint of serial cheating. Number 19. Wolf Girl and Black Prince Wolf Girl and Black Prince begins with Erica lying to her friends about who she is dating in order to impress them. When she asks to prove it, she ends up snapping a picture of a random guy only to have them recognize him. Naturally, to protect herself from embarrassment, Erica asks the guy, Kayoya, to pretend to be her boyfriend. Unlike any actual nice person, he agrees, but only if she agrees to become his dog. That is not how fairy tale or even mundanely average relationships should start. Eventually, the two fall in love, but not really because Kayoya changes. It is more because Erika develops a serious case of Stockholm Syndrome in the form of understanding him better because he is so wounded. Number 18. Kodomo no Jikan the entire plot of Kodomo no Jikan surrounds Rin, a third-grade girl, and her tireless efforts to seduce Daisuke, her 25-year-old teacher. There is little more to say as to why this wildly inappropriate relationship is unhealthy. Of course, there is also the added drama in the series where Rin's cousin, who raises her, gets jealous of Daisuke because he wants to sleep with Rin too. So, there's that. Number 17. Bigara HK where to even start? Yamada wants to have casual sex with 100 different men while she is in high school. But first, she must lose her virginity. Being self-conscious about her lady bits, she chooses Kasura to be her first, a complete nerd. However, Yamada is inept at seduction, and Kasuda is an actual honestly nice guy. Yes, the anime is full of laughs, but they end up together in the end. Does this mean Yamada will give up her slutty quest? Should Kasuda be concerned that he was literally a stepping stone? We will likely never know, but it doesn't make for a strong foundation for a relationship. Number 16. Pet Girl of Sakura Hall Surata likes to take in abandoned and helpless things like his growing collection of cats. Mashiro is literally barely able to take care of herself. Eventually, they begin to have feelings for each other, feelings that the infantile Mashiro barely understands. When you are responsible for taking care of a girl like she was a pet, which is the plot of the series, it is not healthy. I think at one point he even bathes her, if I recall. Number 15. Dragon Ball Z People don't watch Dragon Ball Z for the romance. But if you examine the romantic relationships within, they are really kind of disturbing. First, you have Chi-Chi that basically stalked Goku and forced him to marry her, only for her husband to die for great lengths of time, possibly to escape her long-term abuse, but mostly to save the world. Next, you have Vegeta and Boma, which the anime neglects to address how they even got together during a time skip. But if you believe the Dujenshi, it is very rapey. While both Boma and Vegeta have strong personalities, the amount of yelling they do in the relationship is not healthy. Vegeta also beats his son, so there's that. Who knows who else he is beating? But one thing is for sure, it is definitely not Goku. Finally, there is Krillin, an android 18, 
a couple that yet again fits with the trend of a strong woman completely dominating a man. For the first years of their marriage, it is clear that she is not fond of living with Roshi, and she is never seen showing Krillin much affection. However, because she has literally nothing to go back to, or somehow feels indebted to him, she stays and verbally berates her husband. Number 14. Future Diary as Future Diary is an anime about a killing game, you can't expect it to be a bit messed up. You probably didn't expect its messed up romance, though. Having a partner that is willing to kill for you is one thing. Having a partner that does kill for you and literally feels nothing about the act is a completely different thing. Whether it is killing your enemies or killing your friends because they might take him away from her, the blossoming relationship displayed in Future Diary is one of the most disturbing in anime. Number 13. Kiss X Sis Unlike other series like Myself, Yourself, or Uremo, where romantic feelings between siblings remain in the realms of the less creepy implied only, Kiss X Sis takes it to the next level. However, the relationship between Keita and his older twin sisters is somewhat better as they are not related by blood, but no less unhealthy. Not only is it really quite strange to fall in love with someone you have treated as a sibling, but two women vying for one man will never end well. Twins may be the dream, but polyamory typically ends in hurt feelings. Number 12. Junjo Romantica Junjo Romantica tells the tale of a budding romance between young college student Masaki Takahashi and his brother's erotica author friend Akihu Usami, whom he moves in with. The show also goes on to tell the side story romances of two other couples, but it is the main one that is the problem. Let's be perfectly clear here first though, the relationship isn't unhealthy because there are two men. But because Akihiko is basically a molester, upon first moving in, Masaki is quite noticeably uncomfortable, not just because Akihiko writes erotica about homosexual relationships, but because he is very touchy. As things go on, his unwanted touching keeps getting rejected, but gets worse until the point that it is basically molestation. Even though Masaki initially tells him to stop, Akihiko also starts in with the rapey phrases like, you know you like it. Number 11. Super Lovers Again, another anime series featuring a relationship with two men. But that's not what makes it unhealthy. Super Lovers tells the love story between Haru and his much younger adoptive brother, Ren. The love that grows between them is mutual. But at no point is Ren, a previously abused child and one not even out of school, an appropriate partner for a man some 10 years his senior. It would be better if Haru were somehow reluctant to the relationship, but he initiates it with his downright predatory behavior. This disturbing relationship, much like the one in Janjo Romantica, is pretty much par for the course in the shanan Ayoi genre though. The genre loves its manipulative, dominating, or older younger tropes and they pretty much stick to their guns. Number 10. Flowers of Evil Flowers of Evil is a masterpiece of highlighting the ugliness in every human. The main character gets caught with the gym cloths of the girl that he has a crush on by another unpopular girl. He ends up forming a contract, dating essentially, with her via blackmail. However, he also starts dating the girl whose gym clothes he stole as well. It ends up a love triangle where each option is just as crazy and problematic in different ways. It is not even dating two girls that is the problem with the relationship. Both girls are horribly toxic as well. Number 9. Domestic Girlfriend Domestic Girlfriend is an absolute dumpster fire romantically, but it is such glorious trash to watch. The entire plot surrounds the world's most average guy, who is in love with his female teacher. Rejected because she doesn't date her students, he ends up sleeping with a random high school girl. When he goes home, he finds that his parent has remarried and his new stepsisters as both the high school girl he slept with and his teacher. Both girls, of course, have feelings for him. To his credit, he maintains his feelings for his teacher. But he doesn't exactly deny his similarly aged stepsister when she makes moves on him. Number 8. Rumbling Hearts Rumbling Hearts is a notorious melodrama romance anime filled with comas and love triangles. Essentially, a guy dates a girl who falls into a coma. While she is comatosed, he starts dating her friend. Of course, she wakes up eventually, and his decision is to continue to date both girls. Number 7. Girlfriend, Girlfriend Girlfriend, Girlfriend is not the first anime about two-timing with multiple girls, but it is the latest and honestly kind of the most insulting. 
Yes, yes, Girlfriend Girlfriend is just funny itchy comedy, but someone somewhere will think this is how girls should act, and that person will swell the incel ranks. Regardless, the premise of Girlfriend Girlfriend is that the main character starts dating his longtime crush and childhood friend. He then gets confessed to by a different cute girl who materialized out of the ether. Instead of just turning her down, he proposes that he dates both. They also immediately move in together, all three of them. The childhood friend is understandably upset, but the main character and his new side bitch manage to convince her that she's wrong to be upset. At least the other two timing anime have the decency to make their anime into dramas rather than let it remain an itchy romantic comedy. Number 6. Scum's Wish Scum's Wish, in short, is about two people who love other people that they cannot be with for one reason or another. As such, they find solace in each other's bodies. That in itself isn't the problematic part. It is the games they play with each other and the other people they like who like them. Scum's Wish is filled with the most toxic people, essentially terrorizing each other romantically. Number 5. Loveless Hey look! Another yaoi! Hey look! It's about a grown man and a straight-up little boy. This time he's a cat boy. So it's fine though, right? On top of that, the love affair itself in Loveless is on the sadomasochistic side, which would be bad if both parties were of age and one side was similarly not into it. Number 4. NTR Netsuzo Trap The girls' love genre of Yuri is not immune to disturbing relationships, but usually they have other sort of problems. The fun thing about this series is it managed to appeal to a small sect of people, while generally pushing away both the female and male fans that usually enjoy Yuri. For those not in the know, NTR is used in the looter circles of anime and manga to describe a cuckold relationship in which one participant is unwilling at first until they are essentially banged until they like it. As such, the series focuses on two girls that are friends who recently each started dating two different boys. Over the course of the series, one girl starts seducing the other girl while still dating both boys. Number 3. Love and Lies The premise of Love and Lies is built around the concept in the world that when you reach a certain age, you are assigned a marriage partner. The main character confessed his love to a crush before receiving his arranged marriage notification. His to-be wife insists he continue dating this girl so she can learn what love is. Any knowledge of anime will tell you that this is going in a direction filled with hurt feelings. Number 2. Happy Sugar Life This anime series is built on a foundation of problematic relationships and has them all over the place. Essentially, it is a love story about a girl who develops an obsession with a child. She kidnaps the little girl and keeps her locked in her apartment carrying on an obsessive affair with her and trying to keep it a secret. It is obsession taken to every disturbing extreme, including eventual murder. If disturbing relationships are kind of your thing, this anime is a trip. Number 1. Iromanga Sensei Iromanga Sensei tells the story of a stepbrother who is in love with and the sole caretaker of his shut-in little stepsister after their parents' death. The whole step-sibling thing is bad. The fact that she is still pretty young is also bad. However, the fact that he is the only person that takes care of her is by far the most problematic part. She doesn't go out, and if the anime wanted to, this could have easily turned into a horror story akin to Happy Sugar Life. The video is coming to an end. Personally, I think 27 is too small a number for all the toxic relationships in anime. However, this is all that came to mind. If you can complete the video and suggest other toxic couples that come to mind, that would be perfect and I can use it to make the next one. Hmm, one thing came to mind. What do you think about Sasaki and Naruto? Is it a romance for you or a friendship? Is it toxic enough for you? I would like to know your opinion.